Good afternoon, everyone. Today we are celebrating Halloween. Hail, hail, the gang's all here. What the heck do we care? What the heck do we care? Hail, hail, the gang's all here. What the heck do we care now? Hail, hail, the gang's all here. What the heck do we care? What the heck do we care? Hail, hail, the gang's If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake, baked a cake, baked a cake. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. How you do, 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 how you do. <clears throat> As a child, I loved trick or treating. I loved Halloween, and I think I. I was reminiscing about some of my Halloween costumes I had when I was a child, <clears throat> and I decided that I wanted to be Pocahontas from the Disney movie, and so my mom made this, uh, like, it seemed like a, like a rawhide kind of dress with fringe, and she bought me this wig with, it was black and dark long braids, and uh, I think I got the most reactions from that one. It was pretty great. My mom was pretty great at making Halloween costumes. In fact, she made all of them. <clears throat> she made all of our costumes, sewing, and she was very dedicated. And I now realize how much time that had to take. I'm one of six kids, so. I mean, she didn't make everyone's every year, but we had lots to choose from, that's for sure. <clears throat> so I have many fond memories of Halloween. And as I got older, I kind of just, eh. It's okay, we passed out candy and things like that. But now that I have a child of my own, I am rejuvenated. <laughs> I'm so excited for Halloween and to dress up and to, to make all the, decorate pumpkins and do all of those festive things. So I am looking forward to sharing some Halloween music with you, but also um, sharing some history and long ago wise tales and lore, lore and things like that. So. We will go ahead and get started with Bad Moon Rising. Looks like we're in. 
it's going to be a full moon this Halloween, so <clears throat> watch out. <laughs> all right, so let's talk a little bit about why we celebrate Halloween. This is all from the History Channel, so uh, hopefully it's pretty credible. Um, the, oops, I'm kind of frozen here. Let's try again. I, um, I love all of the superstition that's surrounded by Halloween. I think it just is kind of fascinating to me. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and go down. Halloween's origins date back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain, pronounced Sowin, so it's spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N, but is pronounced Sowin, so I got that completely wrong. The Celts, who lived 2,000 years ago, mostly in the area that is now Ireland, the United Kingdom, and northern France, celebrated their new year on November 1st. This day marked the end of the summer and the harvest and the beginning of the dark cold winter, a time of year that was often associated with human death. Celts believe that on the night before the new year, the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred. On the night of October 31st, they celebrated Sowin <coughs> when it was believed that the ghosts of the dead returned to earth. In addition to causing trouble and damaging crops, Celts thought that the presence of the otherworldly spirits made it easier for the Druids or Celtic priests to make predictions about the future. For people entirely dependent on the volatile world, these prophecies were an important source of comfort during the long dark winter. To commemorate the event, Druids built huge sacred bonfires where the people gathered to burn crops and animals as sacrifices to the Celtic de deities. During the celebration, the Celts wore costumes, typically consisting of animal heads and skins, and attempted to tell each other's fortunes. When the celebration was over, they relit their hearth fires, which they had extinguished earlier that evening from the sacred bonfire to help protect them during the com coming winter. <clears throat> By 43 AD, the Roman Empire had conquered the majority of the Celtic territory. In the course of the 400 years that they ruled the, the lands, two festivals of Roman origin were combined with the traditional Celtic celebration of Sohain. The first was Feralia, a day in late October when the Romans traditionally commemorated the passing of the dead. The second was a day to honor Pomona, the Roman goddess of fruit and trees. The symbol of Pomona is the apple, and the incorporation of the celebration into their, the original celebration probably explains the tradition of bobbing for apples that is practiced probably not this Halloween, but in normal Halloweens. <laughs> That's why we celebrate Halloween. Goes back a long way. All right. This is Hungry Like the Wolf. Running inside and I'm hungry like the 
to my mom. <laughs> that sounds bad. Only because she it was on the radio all the time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. We'll keep reading about Halloween. How about? All right. On All Saints Day, on May 13th, 609 AD, Pope Boniface IV dedicated a pantheon in Rome in honor, honor of all Christian martyrs, and the Catholic Feast of All Martyrs Day was established in the Western Church. Pope Gregory III later expanded the festival to include all saints as well as all martyrs and moved the observance from May 13th to November 1st. By the 9th century, the influence of Christianity helped spread into Celtic lands where it became, gradually blended and supplanted over Celtic rites. In 1000 AD, the church made November 2nd All Souls Day, a day to honor the dead. It is widely believed that the church was attempting to replace the Celtic Festival of the Dead with the related church-sanctioned holiday. <clears throat> All Souls Day was celebrated similar to, similarly to Sohow, with big bonfires, parades, and dressing up in costumes as saints, angels, and devils. The All Saints Day celebration was also called All Hallows, or All Hallows, from English, Middle English, all Hallow Messe, meaning All Saints Day. And the night before it, the traditional night of Sohau, what in the Celtic region began to be called All Hallows Eve and eventually Halloween. All right, this is from the movie The Addams Family. <laughs> Together, Uki, the Adams family. Their house is a museum where people come to see them. They really are a scream, the Adams family. So get a witch's shawl on, a broomstick you can crawl on. We're gonna pay. as a child. Okay. <clears throat> Halloween comes to America. The celebration of Halloween was limited in colonial New England because of the rigid, rigid Protestant belief systems there. It was much more common in Maryland and the southern colonies. As the beliefs and customs of different European ethnic groups and the American Indians meshed, a distinctly American version of Halloween began to emerge. The first celebrations included play parties, which were public events held to celebrate the harvest. Neighbors would share stories of the dead, tell each other's fortunes, dance, and sing. Colonial Halloween festiv festivities also featured the telling of ghost stories and mischief-making of all kinds. By the middle of the 19th century, Annual autumn festivals were common, but Halloween was not yet celebrated everywhere in the country. In the second half of the 19th century, America was flooded with new immigrants. These new immigrants, especially the millions of Irish fleeing the Irish potato famine, helped to popularize the celebration of Halloween nationally. <clears throat> Borrowing from European traditions, Americans began to dress up in costume and go house to house asking for food or money, a practice that became today's trick-or-treat tradition. Young women believed that on Halloween they could divine the name or appearance of their future husband by doing tricks with yarn, apple parings, or mirrors. In the late 1800s, there was a move to, in America to mold Halloween into a holiday more about community and neighborly get-togethers than about ghost pranks and witchcrafts. At the turn of the century, Halloween parties for both children and adults became the most common way to celebrate the day. Parties were focused on games, foods of the season, and festive costumes. <clears throat> P 
Parents were encouraged by newspapers and community leaders to take anything frightening or grotesque out of Halloween celebrations. Because of these efforts, Halloween most lost most of its superstitious and religious overtones by the beginning of the 20th century. Okay. This is The Witch Doctor. wrote that is very creative. <laughs> it, I don't know. I wouldn't have been able to come up with that. <clears throat> okay. All Souls Day and Soul Cakes. The American Halloween tradition of trick-or-treating probably dates back to as early as All Souls Day sprays in England. During the festivities, poor citizens would beg for food and families would give them pastries called soul cakes in re return for the promise to pray for the family's dead relatives. The distribution of soul cakes was encouraged by the church as a way to replace the ancient practice of leaving food and wine for roaming spirits. The practice, which was preferred to as going a souling, was eventually taken up by children who would visit the houses in their neighborhood and be given ale, food, and money. The tradition of dressing in costume for Halloween was both European and Celtic roots. Hundreds of years ago, winter was an uncertain and frightening time. Food supplies often ran low, and for many people afraid of the dark, the short days of winter were full of constant worry. On Halloween, when it was believed that ghosts came back to the earthly world, people thought that they would encounter ghosts if they left their homes. To avoid being recognized by these ghosts, people would wear masks when they left their homes after dark 
so that the ghosts would mistake them for fellow spirits. On Halloween, to keep ghosts away from their houses, people would place bowls of food outside their home to appease the ghosts and prevent them from attempting to enter. Sounds like a very scary time. All right, this is the Monster Mash. something about Halloween matchmaking and lesser known rituals. This is a really long article with lots of great information, but we just don't have time for it all. All right, so rituals. What about the Halloween traditions and beliefs that today's trick-or-treaters have forgotten all about? Many of these obsolete rituals focused on the future instead of the past and the living instead of the dead. In particular, many had to do with helping young women identify their future husbands and reassuring them that they would someday, with luck by next Halloween, be married. In 18th century Ireland, a matchmaking cook might bury a ring in her mashed potatoes on Halloween night, hoping to bring true love to the diner who found it. <coughs> in Scotland, fortune tellers recommended that an eligible young woman named name a hazelnut for each of her suitors and then toss the nuts into a fireplace. The nut that burned to ashes rather than popping or exploding, the story went, represented the girl's future husband. And in some versions of the legend, the opposite was true. The nut that burned away symbolized the love would not last. Another tale had it that if a young woman ate a sugary concoction made of walnuts, <coughs> 
excuse me, walnuts, hazelnuts, and nutmeg before bed on Halloween night, she would dream about her future husband. Young women tossed apple peels over their shoulders, hoping that the peels would fall on the floor in the shape of their future husband's initials, trying to learn about their futures by peering at egg yolks floating in a bowl of water and stood in front of mirrors in darkened rooms holding candles and looking over their shoulders for their husbands' faces. My goodness. Other rituals were more competitive. At some Halloween parties, the first guest to find a burr on a chestnut hunt would be first to marry. At others, the first successful apple bobber would be the first down the aisle. Of course, whether you're not, whether or you're, we are asking for romantic advice or trying to avoid seven years of bad luck, each one of these Halloween superstitions relies on the goodwill of the very same spirits whose presence early, the early salts felt so keenly. I don't know about that. That seems like a stretch. <laughs> okay, how about the purple people eater? There's a lot of silly songs about Halloween. It was a one-eyed, one-horned, blind, purple people eater. One-eyed, one-horned, blind, purple people eater. One-eyed, one-horned, blind, purple people eater. Sure looks strange to me. One horn. I said, Mr. Purple People Eater, what's your line? He said, it's eating purple people and sure is fine. But that's not the reason that I came to land. I want to get a job in a rock and roll band. Well, bless my soul, rock and roll, fine, purple Pigeon toed undergrowth, flying purple people eat. We wear short shorts, flying purple people eat. Or sure looks strange to me. And then he swung from the tree and he laid on the ground. He started to rock, really rocking around. It was crazy, did he, with the swing and tune. Sing about ba 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 Bless my soul, rock and roll, flying purple Eater, pigeon toed undergrowth, flying purple people eater. I like short shorts, flying purple people eater. Sure looks strange to me. Purple people. And then he went on his way. And what do you know? Some last night on a TV show. He was blowing it out, really rocking him dead. Playing rocking music with the horn in his head. He was a one eyed, one horn, flying purple people eater. One eyed, one horn, flying purple people came up with that too <laughs> all right and we are about out of time already but I hope you enjoyed hearing all the history of Halloween and how we got to where we are today I for one sure like the fun loving less I mean being scared is kind of fun too and like the scary Halloween movies and the eerie feelings that come along with the holiday but I also really like the parties and the the fun part so we are going to finish with Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree. Don't sit, don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. No, no, no. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Till I come marching home. Don't go walking down lovers' night with 
all are able to get out somehow and celebrate the season of Halloween and fall and participate in all the events we have going on. So I have enjoyed putting this one together. It was kind of silly. So I hope you did as well. I'll see you all next time. Have a great day.